Well, after this past week of that great weather we've been having, really enjoying of it, a lot of us have been thinking about gardening and maybe you're getting gardening fever. But the reality is that we live in the upper Midwest. There's still some cooler weather. Phil's been talking about this in our future. So that is the perfect opportunity to focus on container gardening. And this morning, we are happy to have Benjamin Carroll with us once again. He's a senior horticulturist at the Chicago Botanic Garden. So nice to have you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, this is such a interesting time of year when it comes to the weather. It is. Because it's not nice, it's not cold, it's or it's back and forth. That's right. And there are certain plants that really thrive in that, this sort of climate yeah, right now. Yeah, that's right. It's interesting you say that because this is really a transitional season. And there's a lot of plants that actually do a lot better in this transition when we get these wild swings of beautiful temperatures like last week and right. you remember the week before we had really cold temperatures so there's some plants that do really good in those temperatures and especially with the cold nights or the cooler nights so there's a lot of plants like the osteospermum you can see here which has that kind of beautiful daisy flower That's this does beautiful. really good in the cooler evenings and the cooler weather and again during the summer it doesn't do so great because it really does prefer a bit cooler temperatures right when it's 95 <clears> and humid <throat> doesn't it's like that so much. It too not much. Not so much. Okay, in fact, excellent. a lot of these are like that. Um, your lettuces as well. You can see this romaine up here in front. And this is just something I got a pack of this at the uh, garden center. And you can plant those up and they'll get nice and full. And you can go ahead and eat them later. But they really do like the cool temperatures now. As well as something like you the parsley before. Yes, and I it's know. so fresh at this time of year. And something so green and just looks wonderful in a pot but also is something you can eat and taste good. And I think that's really important to think about when you're doing your spring containers to think about having something that looks good, but also something that you can enjoy and eat as well. So if you put a container together, think about maybe using something like some perennials, and then something that, again, is a spring plant, some snapdragons, which do good in the cooler weather, I but also do good in the warmer weather. So that's kind of a, a long extended season flower. So when you plant, uh, plant <coughs> these different containers and you think about some of these cooler weather plants, so should your goal to kind of be different plants, maybe you'll be taking some out during the summertime, maybe you'll keep some of them in, or That's you right. just usually just gut the whole thing and start over? Well, you can do it either way, really. There's some ways, sometimes you can plant some really nice plants like ivies, which will look good through the summer, and then go ahead and just fill in the plants that don't look so good later in the season. Or you can go ahead and use something like this columbine, like I said before. Now, that is a spring flowering. That's a perennial but that looks really good now. It won't look good in the summer. It'll be done blooming. So okay. I say go ahead and plant that in a spring container, but then when you take it out, put it in your garden, it, because it's a perennial, right. it'll come back next year. So you have it in your garden next year as well. So you've got it as a container plant and also as a garden plant. Right. It's kind of a double- Dual use there. Dual use, absolutely. All you're right, right, excellent. And, and also when you're doing your containers, make sure that when you're starting them this spring, and I have seen yesterday with the nice weather, I've seen so many people out planting up containers. It's really great to see people doing yes, it. Yes, it is. We're all, we all have like spring fever, fever right? absolutely. We're ready to get out and about. Yeah, you're right. But when you do plant up your new containers, make sure that you take out some of the old soil that's kind of spent and put in some nice fresh soil for your new plants, and that'll they'll really thank you for that. For the entire container, or just like if six you have a, inches deep, or if what you, do you have recommend? a really big container, go down, you know, to a depth. But if you've got a short container, just dump the whole soil out and start fresh. Okay. So yeah, it's what the roots like to get into, and and also feed as well. If you want lots of flowers, make sure you're feeding them and keeping them well watered even in the cooler temperatures. All right, you're also talking about this particular <coughs> plant's another edible plant. It seems yeah. like we're, we're in garden fever too, in the sense of wanting to eat. plant a garden so you can eat some yeah, of this stuff. Absolutely. This is an edible lettuce? It's Mizuna, it's called Japanese greens, and it's kind of, it's not a lettuce, but you can eat it in salads. So the okay. young leaves, you can actually pick off and eat as a, as a salad or you can take the bigger leaves and you can stir fry them as a kind of more like a green. What's the taste like? You can, I think they taste really good. One of my colleagues didn't like it so much, but it's really fresh and really green, not very peppery, which is very mild. So it's kind of nice for salads. All it's right, really good. Very nice. And you have something coming up too at Botanic Garden we in the do. next week or so. We're really excited. Yep, there. yep. On the 16th through the 18th, we've got the Antiques and Garden Fair, which is a amazing. It's kind of our um, welcome to spring. It's a really huge event where we bring over a hundred vendors from not only the United States but also from Europe and they bring antiques to the garden and they've got uh, stands set up where they're showing their wares and it's just absolutely beautiful stuff. And also some local people, you can see this lead, these lead containers here, right, beautiful these. and they're really heavy. But they are um, made from English molds and sent over. And the company that actually does this is from Northbrook, it's called Trellis and Trugs. Those are and beautiful. And they import them and they're really, really nice, yeah. And then also, these are kind of expensive. Um, the smaller one is about 1000 The square one is about 1500 But Wow, yeah. really? 
but they're absolutely beautiful and they'll last forever. All right. But then there's also some really small items like you can see the pots and the tools up front. So there's something for everyone at the sale. It doesn't have to be a very expensive item and you can take something really special home with you. It's and really besides, nice. And you could go check out all the beautiful plants there and too. I'm sure there, everything's starting to bloom. It's yes. looking really good. Very Spring nice. is here. Yep. Well, if you're not a member or you haven't had a chance to visit, you should definitely go to the Chicago Botanic Garden. That's located at 1000 Lake Cook Road in Glencoe. It's about 20 miles north of downtown Chicago. Beautiful spot, nice place to just really kick back and relax. Also remember, the Antiques and Garden Fair is coming up. That's on April 16th through the 18th. You can find more information at the Gardens website. We also have a link on our website. That's abc7chicago.com. Be sure to look under See It on TV in the upper right-hand part of the page. And we'll be right back. That was a nice glimpse of spring there. Great. Thank you. Thank you.